so we chose manual and now if you have other systems so you have to use manual you would see the disks or the partitions here i have only one partition so i only see free space so now we have to create the boot partition which can't be encrypted so i'm gonna click here create a new partition for boot you only need like one gigabyte so i i can use one gigabyte you can use two gigabytes or even 500 megabytes doesn't really matter i think should be okay with 500 megabytes and it's gonna be primary you do it from beginning and mount point will be boot and you are done setting this partition so now we will create the encrypted volume so you press configure encrypted volumes write changes to the disk because i created the partition create encrypted volumes you select the free space if you have other systems here you would see them here windows for example use ntfs system so instead of x4 here there would be ntfs so you have to select the free disk else you will overwrite your installations and you are done with setting this partition now you have to write changes to the disk and it will erase the disk if you don't do this the disk won't be encrypted so now you have to finish and erase the data and this will take time again so depending on the size of the disk so once it finishes i'll be back and we are nearly done here with erasing the data so now you have to select the encryption passphrase I'm just gonna do one, two, three. But if you use weak password like that, you will have to confirm you want to use it. So for this example, it's okay, but don't use one, two, three. You can change it later, but or you can have more passwords for the partition, but you shouldn't use weak passwords. Why encrypt at all? so now you you have the encrypted volume and you can't really install anything on this because you have to create logical volume on the encrypted volume and install on that so you open logical volume manager we made changes so we write in and now you have logical volumes that but they need to be in a group so we create a group we call that group group one you select the encrypted disk for the group and now you have the group so you can create logical volumes on the disk you see it's it's this one and we now name the logical volume so we need two partitions we need swap or we don't need swap but i would really advise you to use swap and since i have two gigabytes of ram on this on this machine it's a virtual machine i will use the same size for the swap and now for the rest of the system we will create another logical volume which we will name root 
and we use the rest of the size of the volume. So now we have two logical volumes, swap and root, which are in volume group one, which use one physical volume, the encrypted volume. So now we can finish. And you see here we have this LV swap and here we have the root. And here we have the boot already set to boot. So this is where from the system will boot, but now we need to set up the swap and root partitions. So we click on swap, users, swap area, and we are done. So now you see we use the swap for swapping, and now we need just the root. So we click on this, use as X4 is the newest system, you can use anything you want pretty much, but X4 I think is the best, maybe you can use XFS, I have no experience with that. And this is important, the mount point has to be the root file system, so that's that's where you have all the data on the system. You can use more partitions and have separate home and temp on different disks, but for this example it's it's okay, you can do it. And we are done. Mount point is root. So now we have the boot, which is not encrypted, and then we have the encrypted volume, on which we have the volume group with two logical volumes, root mounted to root, and swap mounted as swap. So now we are done. We can fi finish partitioning, write changes, and now you install the system. So after you boot, I'll show it maybe. Yeah, I'll show it. After you boot the system, you will need to enter the password, which is 123 for me. So I'll be back when the system boots. So now I boot it into my system and you can see it wants password if I if I add. If I enter wrong password, it warns me, so I'm gonna do one, two, three. And the disk is unlocked. And you can see I'm in. So I can log, log in now. And I can check maybe the partitions with fdisk if it's installed. Maybe it's has been fdisk mean minus l, I think. And I need to use the root, so I'm going to log in as root. And use the has been f disk minus l, and you can see the def sda five is encrypted, and on there you have the groups group one swap and group one root. So the installation was successful. I hope this video helped you, and see ya.